Hi, this is Savio. I've been seeking answers to some of life's most perplexing questions my entire life. In 2014, I was diagnosed with stage 3 cancer. And ever since, I realized my calling existed outside of what I knew to be familiar. This podcast is home for survivors like myself and those who yearn to build resilience in their mindset and live their best life. In Season 3, the show includes a mix of coaching sessions followed by interviews with those from all walks of life who have been successful in the wellness, business, media, and travel industries. The intent is to show the human experience in its rawest form so that others may glean insight. Nothing is rehearsed. As a board-certified wellness coach, number one best-selling author, and syndicated columnist, my job is to ask the deep questions of those trying to make sense of their place in this fractured world. I believe life speaks to us in different ways. Many of us listen, but don't know how or where to begin. As someone who has crossed the bridge between life and death, I say simply, begin where you are now and get busy living. If you liked today's episode, I would appreciate it if you could share it. Be sure to tag me at The Human Resolve so I can reciprocate in kind. So without further ado, welcome to The Human Resolve Podcast. This podcast guest is Jackie Pryor, educator, PhD graduate, and four-time cancer survivor. As Jackie states, I think the failure to myself would be greater simply. And I only say that because I am my own critic. I'm my best critic. I'm my worst critic. And I'm all those critics. And so I know that I would come down the hardest on me. That it's me that I worry about. Hi, Jackie. It's good to see you. Hi, Savio. Great to see you as well. Wonderful. So what would you like coaching on? So today I'd love to talk about having the courage to really start out on my own, meaning stepping away from a full-time job and really putting some energy into um, maybe my own business or my own pursuits. Okay, so what I'm hearing is you want to have the courage to be bold and, and pursue some of those things that are loftier for your life. Yes, yes. Great. So what would be a great outcome for today? So for today, it would be a great outcome if I could have something to grab onto, like a piece, a nugget or two about how to get out of my own way to achieve such a lofty goal. So a piece or a nugget, something to hold on to towards mm-hmm. that goal. Yes. Great. How have you faced um, difficult decisions in your life in the past? Yeah, so I guess the biggest one would be as being a cancer survivor, um, also finishing a terminal degree. Both of those were pretty lofty things that took kind of took a lot out of me, required a lot, you know, on the front end and throughout. And even as I move beyond those two goals, there are pieces of it that, you know, still kind of linger that I feel like as I reflect, I'm like, oh, my goodness, that was a lot. That was hard. Um, And so I would just say that being able to see the end goal, knowing and believing that there, no matter what's going on, that there is a step along the way, like there is a next step that I could focus on was really helpful. And then, of course, a a network around me of support, my faith, um, those things really helped along the way. So when you sort of transition this into this quandary of yours, Mm -hmm. what's coming up for you? specifically relating to this goal yeah so I was in the in the process of trying to become a vendor through my employer to where I could um, provide services outside of my work hours um, for you know subsidiary pay doing some of the work that I really love Um, that has kind of fallen through for now and I'm okay with that I'm just you know, it's about to be a different season at the job. My focus is going to be on other things and I'm going to try again after the summer. But so I think those next steps would definitely be solidifying that piece of my goal, if that is the logical next step. Um, and then, gosh, who knows after that? <laughs> mm. and but it's is, all very scary. <laughs> when you think speak of the scariness, does that aff- hit you anywhere in your body? Um, I feel like it makes my whole body want to sit down <laughs> and stay still. Makes your whole and body maybe, wants- 
and maybe even step back. Sit down, stay still, and step back. Yes. More context around stay still. Yes, so with staying still, it's comfortable to be where I am. It's comfortable to choose those spaces. And it's comfortable knowing what's typically going to happen (laughs) when I stay still. When you're moving and shaking, and there's a lot of unpredictable effects of that. Completely out of control. Um, Yeah. So standing still allows you to feel more comfortable. Mm Mm-hmm. And if things got shook up, what would happen? I believe ultimately there will be some sort of resolution. But before things settle, there's stuff crap everywhere. <laughs> there's just stuff everywhere. And I don't want to be that stuff. You know, I just, you know, I'm used to helping other people with that stuff rather than being that stuff. So in the middle, there's just chaos or organized chaos before a resolution. And if you was to visualize yourself in this organized or unorganized chaos, what do you see around you? It, if, especially if I close my eyes and I think about it, I just feel like puzzle pieces are everywhere. It's just, you know that they connect some way, somehow but there's just pieces everywhere. And that feeling inside of me is, it creates anxiety, um, uncertainty, doubt, definitely little to no confidence associated with it as well. Would you like to explore this anxiety, doubt, a little confidence? Uh, Sure. Okay, so once you get comfortable in your seat, You can soften your gaze, or if you feel more comfortable or inclined, you can close your eyes and just want to take a couple of breaths in and out. Just going to do a body scan. I just want you to breathe into the different body parts that I mentioned. Breathe in the top of the head, the forehead, the eyes, the ears, the cheeks, the mouth, the lips, the neck, shoulders, the upper body, the hands, the arms, the solar plexus, stomach, torso, your legs, your feet. Just take a couple more breaths in and out. When you think of this unsettled anxiety. What's happening now, Jackie? I feel much more relaxed. Um, I wish it were, I wish I could easily get into this state when I think about the things that need to happen in order to get to this goal. So what's the worst possible thing that could happen if you if you went for the goal? The the parts that I choose to tackle first, um, if they fell apart, that's that's the worst. They could fall apart, and I know me. I would just come back and try it again regroup, maybe gather some more information, find me an ally, try it again. And then on the flip side, what's the best thing that could happen? Success. (laughs) Success will be the best thing that could happen and freedom, just agency, all those wonderful, amazing words that evade us sometimes. Success, freedom, and agency. I see you smiling. Mm Mm-hmm, yeah. (laughs) Where's that joy coming from? 
just the idea of having more choices and having more authority over the work, the professional work that I do in my life. It, it really brings me joy to, to think and consider that that could be possible. Is there anyone in your life that you admire who's on that path? Uh, I've met people in other fields um, who are doing their own thing. Yeah, so I would say yes. Yes. What do you think the secret sauce is for them? Um, they're fearless. <laughs> they're fearless. They... Um, not afraid of failure and the ones I'm thinking of have kind of been in it for a little bit so I would say they also have experience so do you have experience in the content in the fields but not the structure so yeah. what we need to what would need to happen for you to get the structure that would just require education, study, um, perhaps acquiring or aligning with a mentor or ally, as I mentioned earlier. Um, I think I have a loose structure in place, so it's not like I'm going in blind. It's just that what I have, I wonder if it's enough. Yeah. Is there anyone you could resource that could help you figure that out? Yeah, I sure could. I could. Um, I've thought about some of these small business organizations that offer support. Um, I actually thought about you, Savio. I know that you're making some, some moves with your own work. Um, and I know that there are resources out there. It's kind of like the words I mentioned earlier, I just need to get out of my own way um, because I know that I have a lot of knowledge and a lot of passion to share, to pour into this work. Um, I think that there are inhibitions based upon just wanting to be secure and safe. Has security and safeness played a big role in your life? Oh yes. <laughs> Oh, yes, from a very young age, um, grew up under a sheltered, I, I say sheltered, but definitely um, parents who were very involved in my life, um, still to this day, very involved in my life. That's how I like it. It's how I want it. Um, and just just knowing that there just wasn't a lot of upheaval in my life growing up. There were, it was fairly smooth I'd say so and so when when cancer rocked my world that was something to adjust to um, definitely had a foundation to to make it and to get through it and the fortitude to do so but that type of strife and adversity was unfamiliar to me so um, yeah I, I just I think that safety and security are definitely in the top five of what I need in order to be okay in this life. When that happened to you, when cancer came into your life, how did your family react? Oh, all hands on deck. <laughs> I became uncomfortably the focal point for everyone. Um, Lots of support, many different aspects, um, spiritual support, financial support, person support, um, just friends were there, took things over. Everything I could have possibly needed was handled. Um, so I was very fortunate to be able to focus on the, I call it the business of getting better um, because these other areas, I had point people you know and so um yeah they all hands on deck <laughs> mm -hmm. you know you also mentioned knowing a couple people so how does fearlessness play a role in your life that is a quality a character trait um that i greatly admire because i feel that i that's not something i naturally am um, a fighter, yes, 
but I feel like courageous may be a bit a more appropriate word for me because despite fear, I move forward. But there is no absence of fear. And honestly, some days, you know, when I think about that word, I wonder if it's even achievable. But so many people I see are much closer to it than I am. So I will call them fearless. But for me, um, that's just a quality that I definitely, when I think of myself and describe myself, it's not a word that I would choose. Um, I aspire to that, but definitely not. That's not me. If the idea of fearlessness quadrupled in your life, Mm -hmm. what would the new Jackie be like? Describe her to me. Oh, she would do it all. She would entertain the crowd. She would share her knowledge. She would be um, coming out of the rafters, out of the wings, and onto the stage. She would be um, introducing the people she knows to others so they can connect and network. Um, she, She would do it all. If, if it quadrupled, she would be a different person. <laughs> would that be a realistic? Absolutely. Would that be realistic? Mm-mm. Oh. Maybe double. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe double. Uh, maybe okay, double. So, so what would be, so you mentioned if you quadrupled all those great things, so if it doubled, mm-hmm. what would the new Jackie be? Um, that new Jackie would probably not be having this conversation with you that new Jackie would have done everything she already needed to do to put to get this ball rolling um and and she'll be waiting to see what the outcome was and checking in and advocating and already looking at next steps for sure sure. so the Jackie 1x the Jackie 2x (laughs) what's in that gap what needs to happen in that gap That's why we're talking. I'm just, I don't know. I, I'm so comfortable. I just think that maybe I need a little discomfort. You know, me, me felt like there was not a choice and I had to have a backup plan. Mm. You had to have a backup plan. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yep. I had to have, I needed that backup plan because what if plan A wasn't working out? Then what was I going to do? I had to have income. So, yeah, I, I, that, that potential insecurity, lack of safety was forcing me to think outside this box. Absolutely. Absolutely. How do your friends and family view you, Jackie? <laughs> they see me as a rock star. They do. Um, I don't often see myself that way, but my family sees me as a rock star. Have you spoken to them about this uh, uneasy feeling you have to go in this direction? Not really. No, I I'm trying to I've been trying to get through it on my own. Um, And there have been some little baby steps along the way, but I have not really engaged them in a full on conversation about what's holding me back. Yeah. What do you suppose they would say to you if you did? They would say, just go for it. You you know, you're going to you're going to do great. They would say, go for it, you've got this. How can I help? Have you tried this? Have you tried that? Have you talked to this person and that person? No holds barred. They would be all in. Would they be the same all hands on deck like they were with your cancer journey? Mm Mm-hmm. I believe they would. I, I sure do, I believe they would. I never thought about that before though. But yeah, I, I believe they would. You know, you spoke a lot about sort of this tug of war of feeling safety and having that comfort with family and friends, but then also feeling like you need to be in discomfort. If I had you hold discomfort in your left hand and the safety and comfort in your right hand, which is closer to what your yearnings are? Which is closer to your heart? Safety and comfort. 
Yeah. Definitely safety and comfort. Is And how do you feel you can shore up more safety and comfort to take that leap? Um, I believe I'm on that path as well because coming back from treatment and being out of work for four years and getting back into work and now getting back into the role that I felt I was born for and I've always wanted to do my entire life feels really good and having a better income so that safety and security feels great which also tugs at my heart because if I do these other things, is it pulling me uh, now going to pull me away from that safety and security again? But I feel very, very safe doing what I'm currently doing. What I believe is that these next steps towards starting something on my own would really give me even more as possible I could get more security from that if I put in the work and if the pieces fall as the as I'd like them to um so it's it's kind of like I'm between these two worlds I'm between these two mountaintops and I just gotta get across somehow you know I need a I need a bridge I need a lifeline yep you really articulated this idea of your family and friends seeing you as a rock star. If you failed at this attempt, Mm -hmm. which is more devastating, the failure to yourself or the failure to your friends and family? Um, I think the failure to myself would be greater simply, and I only say that because I am my own critic. I'm my best critic. I'm my worst critic. I'm all those critics. And so I believe that that would be, I know that I would come down the hardest on me. That's, it's me that I worry about. Is there a um, famous author, celebrity, someone in history who you just are mesmerized by the impossibility of what they achieved? Um... Gosh, there's a bunch. The things that they achieved. Well, one person I wrote about when I submitted um, my story to Authority Magazine through you was uh, Robin Roberts because she, um, we're actually from the same hometown um, and along around the same time we were both going through a stem cell transplant and this is a woman in the very public eye who was unafraid to speak about her medical challenges and journey and successes in the open media and spotlight you know and um, those who are familiar with her story know that she did I mean she came from a very very small town in Mississippi but she's you know, been this newscaster with on television, news anchor, and she's um, doing all these great things. She's an author. Um, she was in the sports casting world as well. So having seen her be in the spotlight and overcome cancer in the spotlight and then now get back into the groove of her life on the other side of things is extremely inspiring to me. Now, we'll, I do believe that she had a whole lot of resources that many cancer survivors do not as they're battling. But if we think about the person and the medical journey, the pieces of that are not very different. So if you think about a person and their internal soul getting through this, you already know that a survivor has achieved a great thing when they can come out a day, a week, a month, a year on the other side of this. So, yeah, I greatly, greatly admire her. What do you think, if you had a conversation with her, what do you think she would tell Jackie? Stop playing, girl. (laughs) She would say, just do this. Go for it. I have training and experience, passion and love for the work. Um, which is evident to everyone around me. It's clear to myself. Um, She would say, go for it. Everybody has stuff. Go for it. 
Do you believe that? I do. I believe that everybody's got something and we keep living this life anyway. You know, we just keep trying, we keep working, we keep pressing on. Um, Yeah, everybody has something. Some type of adversity, some type of challenge, whether public or secret, um, everybody's got it. So how can you gather that lifeline that, that to cross over that bridge you mentioned? Mm. What's the first step? The first step for me is I like how you focused or helped me focus on what's the worst that could happen. So maybe if I just go ahead and, and see that worst that can happen, see it through, think it through, um, just be very analytical about it, then as if it already happened or as if... I've planned out my response to every piece of it, then maybe I can get out of my own way and say, you know what, it's just time. Stop letting this hinder you. You're, you're courageous, go for it. Be, be Jackie 2.0. <laughs> be Jackie 2.0. Yes. And what if Jackie 1.0 is still tugging at you with the obstacle of Jackie 1.0? What, what would you say or do about that? I'm going to have to dress up like Jackie 2.0 and keep going. (laughs) I'm just going to have to put on her clothes and put on her persona and just be her. Yeah. Yeah. Does does Jackie 2.0 give you the spiritual or the soul-filling feeling? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thinking about the evolution of me, which I've thought about a lot lately. Um, thinking about the evolution of me is exciting. And, and part of the unknown, the unknown pieces of it are also exciting in that respect. Like the unknown often scares me, but when I think about the evolution of myself, those unknowns excite me. So yeah, it, it feels good to think that these inhibitions could be set aside for this goal. I mean, I honor my inhibitions. I believe they have had a place in my life. Um, I believe that they have and continue to serve their purpose. Um, So I don't want to ever want to lose those. They probably have helped me and kept me out of some situations, but you know, in certain situations, they are not helpful. So what what would be three words to describe Jackie 2.0 ready ready um confident confident and unafraid ready confident and unafraid Mm mhm and so how do you keep accountable towards that I'm just going to have to write some things down, set some goals, some quantifiable goals, some due dates. That's, I'm going to have to do that. And probably an accountability partner. And is that feasible? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's feasible. I had an accountability partner in choosing to meet with you. I had somebody talking with me and following up with me. Um, in the work that I've had the pleasure of doing with you. So yes, it's possible. Jackie, who's your biggest cheerleader? Um, My twin brother, probably, yeah. Yeah? Mm Mm-hmm. And what would you say about this endeavor that you're you're now gonna attempt to do? He would say, and he has said, this is so exciting. (laughs) What's next? Like, this is so exciting. He's so excited. He is, yeah, he has. He said that. And sometimes I wonder what he's so excited about. <laughs> but yeah, he's definitely a fan, and I'm a fan of his, but yes. Yeah. Jackie, we talked a lot about this new transition and you feeling a certain way about it, and then you knowing that you need to step into it, but there's just re- some resistance. And then you spoke about the feeling in your body of kind of wanting to hold back and stop and I'm just wondering what's what's happening now I feel a little bit looser in my body I feel that 
this goal is slightly less lofty. Um, I feel energized. I feel energized. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. If you was to, I don't know, give yourself a moniker or a phrase for this feeling, what would that be? Um... Hmm. Jackie Liberate. Jackie Liberate. Mm hmm. Just okay. liberate. So, so, sort of like a transformer where they're like, Transformers! <laughs> <alive."> yes. <laughs> yes, Jackie Liberate. Just go. Jackie Liberate. Just free yourself. Just be free to try this. Yeah. Yeah, that's the first word that came to my mind is just liberate. Wonderful. Well, mm -hmm. Jackie, this is beautiful. Is this a good place for us to uh, transition into the interview portion? Yes, sure. Let's do okay. it. So, Jackie awesome. Pryor, tell my audience more about you, your work, what you do in life, your mission, your goals. Yeah, so I'm Jackie. I am an elementary school teacher. I love children. I love knowledge. Um, and I try to create excitement around knowledge uh, for them because I feel it every day. I'm a huge reader. I love to read almost anything. Um, I want them to have that love as well. So yeah, that's who I am. I am a four-time lymphoma survivor. Um, and about five years ago, I finished my PhD in elementary education. So that was, that journey ended up being simultaneous to my cancer journey, which was crazy, but um, made it through. And, you know, now my focus is really, really trying to provide services outside of the classroom for children in areas that might not necessarily be purely academic. So I would like to focus on like our executive functioning skills, self-esteem, public speaking and debate, um, just different things that definitely connect to academic skills, but not, but, but might not be purely academic proficiency skills. So, um, and then I'm, I've also done some work with early literacy and I just want to really remind as many people as I can, that there is a whole child in there. Um, and especially with COVID, which has shaken so many of us up and many people in their formative years have been impacted by this. I'm really helping them to see like there's learning is so dynamic. Um, so that's who I am, that's my work, that's my passion. I also have a huge passion for survivorship, cancer survivorship. And so when I can meet and talk with others about their own journey, connect with them, um, listen, uh, I try to do less talk. I'm not much of a talker anyway, but I try to do less talking and listen more in those situations. And I find that that is healing me. Um, and I hope that it's helping others to heal as well. So, yeah, that's what I do. Wonderful. Um, I was curious about this idea of education. You know, it's a obviously a well-needed thing. We all want education, but you're in the trenches. What are two pain points that you see from that vantage point that when can you say be pain, pain points generally speaking are we speaking in the wake of covid both actually both okay so pain points for children um there is a lot going on with i think the impact of social media on children's lives um and how you know teachers always I don't want to say teachers always. One goal of a teacher should be to create a safe space in the classroom. Um, the goal of an administrator should be to create safe spaces in their schools. This idea of a digital space where children interact is very difficult to manage and to maintain as a safe space. And we find in those inner workings that it's very, very, very challenging to protect our children. And it's creeping into their academic lives, their social lives, their family lives, their psyche. It's really, really impacting our kids. So 
I think there's a lot of work to be done with helping children be knowledgeable about that from an emotional uh, approach, from an emotional aspect. Because a lot of people are just seeing it, oh, they're just on Twitter, or they're just on TikTok, or they're just... On but there's a lot going on in here. There's a lot going on. Sorry, there's a lot going on in their head and there's a lot going on in their heart at the same time. So, and it creeps right back into the school. So now they're trying to do their work and they're thinking about the post from yesterday. Yeah. So that's one piece. And then um, I, I think also that there's a lot with identity going on. I also have a background in counseling. Um, so there's a lot going on with identity of children, and that's a whole, 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 whole big bowl to talk about. But I'm just going to leave it at that. Helping students to feel like it's okay to be who they are is really important and is creeping into schools more and more and more. And it's getting affecting children at younger and younger and younger ages. So those are two things, generally speaking. And then with COVID, I would just say like, the academic health or academic achievement of our children as well as their social well-being have been impacted by COVID. Um, some children, when they went virtual, they really thrived academically and emotionally because they crave different things, different levels of engagement in those areas. But many of our very social students are really struggling to you know, find themselves again being back in school and some of them still being virtual. In the educational space, what new innovations are you most excited about? I love that COVID has thrown us into this digital space because it really does add to instruction. It can be very intimidating, especially for us older educators, um, but it really has added to, and I've used this word a couple times, but it's made learning more dynamic. There's just so many different things that people can do online at home, at school. Children are learning to do, do different things and they're becoming more technologically fluent with the things that they are doing on these devices. It's amazing. They're, I'm learning from my students every day. Um, so I think that that is really exciting and we should definitely not shy away from that and be fearful. We need to wield it and use it to um, support instruction, to guide instruction to build up students because they are a lot quite comfortable with <laughs> with these devices and being online and things like that yeah yeah you know what's interesting so i attended south by southwest i was invited um to do uh to be part of the press track uh, so I was mm -hmm. there for about four days, and what was really big there was NFTs, metaverse, and to some people, yes. all these terminologies are so nebulous, and there's no sort of meaning or functions, but I attended a lot of activations, which basically meant I got to test out what these actually mean. And what I found really profound were two things. One uh -huh. was sort of this idea of an even playing field. When you're in the metaverse, a digital, there is no, I identity is kind of yes. lost. You're all exploring a new world, so to speak. So that uh, bias is not gone, but it's sort of put to the side, which is really beautiful because it's like creating a whole new world. And the second thing was, was what someone said on a panel. She mentioned in a world in which we live in, where history is trying to be erased, where the truth is trying to be obfuscated, there, the digital footprint that NFTs and crypto and blockchain offers is that it could never be erased and it could always be accessed. So I just wanted to know from your specific vantage point of what, you're, mm -hmm. what you do and, and you know, the, the sort of individuals you're around, how, is this, how does this feel? How, how, how is this uh, possibly a good thing or possibly mm -hmm. maybe a bad thing? Yeah, and so you're speaking any type of digital footprint, just never being able to be erased? Yeah, that's what the blockchain yeah. is. The blockchain yeah. is you access and it's the, it's transparent. It can never mm -hmm. be changed, never could be deleted, never could be erased. It could it could be viewed and you could you could track authenticity from that. Yeah, I think that it's both empowering, powering and frightening. Because if you are putting yourself out there in a positive way, it would be great for you and for others. Um, and you can 
build yourself up in that way, in that space, and whatever makes sense for you. On the other hand, um, if you are putting yourself out there in a negative way or others are putting you out there in a negative light, it's still permanent. It's still there and it's going to forever indelibly like affect you. Um, and, and the thing is like others add to this footprint, others add to this image of you online and it can render us powerless. So it's, it comes back to that sense of control or feeling out of control. Like there's just, there's only so much that you can do to shape how you are viewed in these spaces. Um, and if you're very, very good at it, it can work out for you. If you're good at it for a moment, you lose your footing or someone decides that they don't want you to be good at it. I believe it can go the other way, but in both situations, it's permanent. So I can see, definitely see benefits and I can see challenges of it. What I am a huge advocate of is at these young ages that we are really watching closely the steps that students are making in these spaces, especially with so many young gamers out there and, and, and designer, like they're creating these avatars and they're creating these identities. Yeah, we definitely need to help them at a young age. Well, what's so exciting to me from someone who has a tech background is this is not people talking about this. These are the movers and shakers. I, I mm -hmm. interviewed CEOs, VPs wow. in these divisions who are trickling down these ideas into the mainstream. Wow. And that got me thinking of personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. I think we've all skirted that. And I think this makes us a little more socially responsible, but also personally responsible. That's true. And just from an educational standpoint, I think that should be the barometer. That should be what we should strive for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we do work with children on that in schools because when something's out there, we challenge them on it. We involve their parents and we say, you know, let's talk about this because there it is, like you said, in black and white. It's right there with their name on it. So absolutely, there is certainly some accountability for that. Any last thoughts you have about this space and what you hope for it to be and what you want it to be? No, I would just like to tell you, thank you for the opportunity to work with you, to write with you, to speak with you. It has truly been a pleasure. And I really, really, really appreciate all the things you're doing to give voice to some people who may feel like they don't have a platform to really get their ideas out. This is absolutely amazing. Oh, thank you so much, Jackie. So tell my thank audience you. where they can find out more about you, your work. So I have a Gmail address. That's all I really wanted to share today. I mean, I don't have a huge social media presence. Um, um, I can be reached at herd, L-L-C, H-E-A-R-D-L-L-C, at gmail.com. And I love to engage in conversations about education and support for children, as well as survivorship and support for cancer patients. And yeah, anyone that wants to reach out, please do. I'd love to engage in a conversation with you. And I'll definitely put the article you and I did for Authority Magazine yes. and Thrive Global uh, in the show notes as well. Um, Sounds great. Thank you so much, Jackie. I really, really appreciated today's conversation. Thank you so much. And good luck to you with all the moves you're making, Savio. That's amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> Take care. Take care. I really hope you enjoyed listening to today's podcast episode of The Human Resolve. If you feel that others may enjoy this episode as well, please share socially at The Human Resolve. You can also visit my website, thehumanresolve.com, where I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, a subscription to my weekly newsletter, where I probe into the secrets from living smarter to feeding your three brains, and my author website, isurvivedcancer.co, where you can purchase my number one best-selling book, I Survived Cancer and Here's How I Did It. 35 cancer survivors share their journey and view the book trailer, including excerpts from the book. If you could also help me out and give me a review and rating on this podcast platform, because I do care what you have to say, I would really appreciate it. Now, get out there, my friends, and get busy living.